Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the August 3rd meeting of the Hyde Park Planning Board. Please take note of the exits around the room and now join me as we salute the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you. The first item on the agenda tonight is a continued public hearing for small O'Malley subdivision. We get a motion to reopen the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. The motion carries. So we had a, there's no one here from the applicants tonight. Um, as I think you may have all seen, there's been a lot of back and forth with DCDPW or Department of Public Works. They were asking for different entrances, different styles of entrances, different widths, etc. So that's still undergoing and underway. In the meantime, uh, we don't have a new submission either, but as I understand it, hi Adriana, sorry. <laughs> as I understand it, we also, uh, there's some, been a reflagging of the wetland, et cetera, we just don't have the data yet. Anybody have any questions about this application? Is there anyone from the public who'd like to speak tonight about this application? There being none, making a motion to adjourn this to September 7th. So moved. Second. Thank you, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Next item on the agenda. Is key construction, office and storage units. The applicants are seeking a site plan approval extension to meet all the conditions, and I'm recused from this, so I'll leave it today as for a moment and turn it over to Vice Chair Dexter. Thank you. Do we have our alternate? I don't see Terry's our alternate. not here tonight. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right. So this is a, uh, this is just other business. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, could you give up, uh, sure. come up and just give us a quick update, because I know we're all anxious to hear. <sighs> you know I'm going to say six little letters, but. Um, so Kelly Leibel with KRC Planning Consultants representing the applicant. We um, mm -hmm. received approval from this board quite some time ago and um, the only, at this point, the only item holding us up from submitting the drawings to seek your signature yep. to solidify the approval is New York State DEC. And um, so what's transpired since we last met you was finally being able to get communication with the person at DEC who was responsible. If you remember during the planning process, we kept keeping you apprised of our communication with DEC with no response. Right. Um, finally got communication with them. We've had uh, field meetings, we've had Zooms, and at this point we're creating a turtle mitigation plan, okay. which I just received the drawing today that's going back and forth and back and forth with DEC. So I just received the drawing modified that we're going to submit to DEC assuming that meets their approval within some time, hopefully in the not too distant future, they approve it. That plan will get incorporated into the site plan that you okay. would approve. There's no uh, substantial changes. There's no changes to the site plan. Um, what they've asked for is a tunnel underneath of the driveway okay. so the turtles yep. can cross. Um, they've asked for uh, some sort of curb or barrier so they can't Try drive over yep. and they've asked for fencing to go around some portion of the project um, we've agreed on a chain link fence that would get buried six inches so as long as the holes are a certain size they'll allow that um, wow. and then we have to create a turtle um, mating <laughs> uh, habitat which we have designed yes I don't know if they're screening for that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but there are families watching. There could be families watching here. So. Yes. So we'll leave it G-rated. Yes. So we're creating a turtle. I guess it's like a habitat enhancement area. Okay. Um, so fortunately, we actually have a spot that is in its current state is perfect for that. It just has to be forever uh, undisturbed. Yeah. So the good thing is that there's no changes to the site plan okay. there's literally no changes it's just adding are these just notes to the site plan then or there's a drawing that's called a turtle mitigation plan okay. so we actually have a separate sheet okay um we'll go over with pete just to make sure for storm water that the fences and so forth those little barriers that we have to put up on the driveway that there is no issues with storm water but right you know DEC oversees stormwater and they're mandating that we separate division but they mandate that we're providing these so right um, we have to provide them um, so once that plan, again, hopefully it goes back to DEC early next week. And now that we've had them engaged, they've been very responsive. So I don't actually know the time frame that it's going to take for them to approve it and what the steps are. This is just a bit right. foreign to me. Um, but we want to preserve the approval 
and uh, yes. there's no other way around it other than getting an extension at this point. And, and, and this happens a lot, right? Um, I'm just curious, who's, who's their contact over there? Do you remember? Sarah. Yeah. Oh. I, I forget their name. Sarah? Sarah. Or something like that? Yeah. yeah. How do you, yeah, I yep. think that's okay. what, there's, there's two. Yep. There's two different people that we're dealing with. Okay. So one is sort of habitat, and I think one is more turtles, but there's two different people. I'm glad you found somebody. Yes, we're Great. trying. So Kelly, we should make that uh, mitigation plan part of the project, um, yeah. like plans, so that the plans yeah. that, that you know the chairman will sign that would include that. Yeah, we'll re and what I'll do is when I send the plan to DC, so after they've received it, I can forward it over to you so that the town has record of it and you can look at it. But we'll renumber the sheets and yeah. change the table of contents so that's included in there. Oh, great. It's just another just another and, sheet. Yeah, right. And fortunately, again, nothing on the site plan has changed other than those. Well, at least there's a plus to that because we weren't sure if there were going to actually be site plan changes. Yeah, thank goodness significant there isn't. Well, site, you know, yeah. what? I should take that back. They have asked and I don't know if we've agreed to do it or not, but they've asked for and, and we like eons ago talked to Pete about this. They've asked for a minor reduction in the driveway in one of the areas to reduce there was like a minor impact into the wetland there and so they've asked that we reduce that and i think i forget what the distance was but we i thought it was like 22 to 20 feet yeah it was very like that. It was very small in one area deal. so that that's the only other thing that they did ask for but we'll make sure that you note that that's, that's right. it well congratulations but i'm sorry that it's hopefully soon. taking this long yeah hopefully by spring we can then we can build so that's the status. But we'll right. do, when we submit that plan set for your signature, assuming we have DEC's permit, we'll include the permit and that, we'll add that as a comment, but we'll include so the it'll permit. It'll be a whole package. The, they can, uh, they can review it and yep. then I can sign it. Correct. Great. Yep. All Great. right. Okay. Um, are there any questions over here from the consultants? I have Adriana. one just minor question. You mentioned, um, thank you. You mentioned um, the turtle habitat had to be preserved or conserved so will that be a an easement or they're not asking for a deed restriction okay yep so they're just asking if there's a note on the plan that a note that on the plan. note be undisturbed got yeah. it okay thank you pete any more questions ms moss no our legal counsel anything i'm not involved okay oh, oh, oh right okay. sorry <laughs> let me uh, just ask my uh, colleagues on the board and i have nothing to add okay rob same nothing. Okay. Chris? Nope. And John? Nothing. Okay, great. We do have your um, extension to uh, a total of 180 day extension created here, and Victoria, Victoria is going to be Chris now. <laughs> cool. Resolution granting two 90 day extensions of time to satisfy conditions of approval, key construction, office, storage units. Resolution number 2020 30 C. Whereas, 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 whereas. Now, therefore, be resolved that the planning board hereby grants the application applicant two 90-day extension of time to satisfy the conditions of site plan approval to and including March 11, 2023. So, second. I second it. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motions carried. Thank you very much. Yes, and we'll I, see you hopefully in a few months. Let's hope that we'll that. see you next month. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. And thank you also, Chris, for stepping up to yes. read a bunch of resolutions as it turns out tonight. <laughs> Who's going to read this? The next item is a workshop. It's Hyde Park Town Center North. This is the application that we've been discussing for a while. It's the first time that, well, there's not really an audience. Sorry, there's no audience <laughs> to see this. <laughs> We're having technical difficulties I heard. tonight. Yes, I heard. So but this will be the first time that this will be discussed in public. And Ms. Leibold is here. This is an application for 4272-4288 Albany Post Road. It's a drive-through retail use that would go partially where the uh, Walden Clock Tower is right now, but importantly, all those elements will be recycled. Ms. Leibold, let me turn it over to you. Thank you. Kelly Leibold with KRC Planning. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, sorry, lost my voice. Uh, Michael Berta, it's Michael Berta Architects. So we had prepared a um, PowerPoint because I thought it was easier to illustrate this project uh, visually that way. And fortunately, we printed them. So um, <laughs> we can 
submit these tomorrow, um, Cynthia, if you just want them on the record as a copy so that you have them. Um, I think this project, everyone knows the location of this project. So we're at, we call it High Park Town Center North. Um, it's predominantly where the pocket park um, is now. And um, so this project is four acres, and this is in the, I keep saying it's the town core, but I'm probably wrong. That's right. It's in the PW, okay, so town core town PW1. Town core PW1, okay. subsection. <clears throat> excuse me. This um, parcel, if you remember, <clears throat> excuse me, God, if I lose my voice, we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting parcel because half of the parcel is in PW2 and half of it is in PW1. So in case anyone goes and references the zoning and quickly looks, um, it's definitely a parcel that's in two different zoning districts. Um, so we um, have, as you indicated, been working with the town and its consultants for quite some time on this little structure. Sometimes the smallest ones are the most difficult. And um, what we're proposing ultimately is what you would call commercial retail use um, tucked into the existing pocket park. So I had prepared um, the demolition plan to go over with you to show you what's being uh, removed, but I will verbally go through that with you so you understand. Um, this small structure, it's 512 square feet. It's very, very small. Um, kind of a, sh you know, more of like a shed, has a drive-through. And what we're proposing is to remove a portion of the pocket park. And you're probably gonna say, what portion? So if you go to the site and you're looking at the pocket park, it's really the first half. So from the parking lot into where the first stone wall is, that whole area will be removed and the building will be tucked into that area. Um, as many of you know, we've gone through kind of the drive-through and the traffic configuration. And the reason that the building was tucked there and was uh, located westerly as much as it is, is because we're, I don't want to say wedging it, but we're placing it between existing infrastructure. So in a perfect world on a new land, you know, raw land site that you would have, there would probably be some different thought with the way that the building is configured. But we are working within an existing infrastructure, particularly the existing septic systems and drywalls that are there. In addition, we also have turning radiuses for the cars and the stacking of the vehicles that we had to take into consideration. And then, of course, lastly, is we had the, we call it the slip through, um, the existing slip through, which is just to the south of the bank. So a portion of that um, stone wall will be removed and put off to the side, and that stone will be reused here. We're going to rebuild that wall and we're going to reuse the clock, um, all new landscaping. And if you recall, a portion of that stone wall will also be reused in front of the Hyde Park office building. So we're gonna create a new stone wall, so the same stone. Um, in addition, there's a portion of the curb that is in front of the, I'll call it the Hyde Park office building, that's going to be removed to create a new turn-in here. So if you're on that main north-south road, there's a new turn-in to get into the drive-through. So right in front of um, the Hyde Park office building, there's a section of curb and there's a section of parking that's going to be removed. Um, Pete raised this issue in one of his comment letters and he said, well, isn't the septic system for the Hyde Park office going there? And it is, but the health department approved um, driving over this portion of the septic system because it's a um, small area where there's a holding tank and it's an expansion area. So that's already approved. The septic system is not shown on the drawings that we gave you, but it's on the drawings in this show illustration. A box. Just yeah. show like a box. Yeah, we'll show refer it. To is the, refer to the plans by, you know, by Joe. Joe. Yeah. Blah, blah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Is there okay. a vent there? Wasn't there an event coming um, out? Like there a small was, because there was an old pump station there. Yeah, so a lot of that will be removed. All of that will be removed. Okay. Yep. So that's the demo, just so underst everyone understands. It's limited demo. There's parking spaces and impervious and so forth that's going to be removed. Um, there's a plan in here that I put a little box around it so you could see where the septic system was on the presentation that I gave you. Um, so the site plan... I understand that it's very challenging to read on these eight and a half by 11, so I apologize. But um, I think we've all seen this before in some fashion, so hopefully we can talk it through. Um, the last time that we were convened, we had discussions about um, improvements that we were going to make to the north of the site immediately behind the TEG uh, credit union. And so again, 
equally complicating this site is, is that you have property lines that run through the parking lot that none of us even know are there. So TEG owns a very small portion of that slip through, like a little itty bitty slip of it. And then there's a property line that goes back behind the structure. And then the property line goes due north. And although none of us know that it's there, it kind of divides, there's some, um, there's some parallel parking spaces that they have there. And so we worked a lot with a, to some of the planning board members and your consultants and really with Pete Cetera and his group and tried to come up with some traffic improvements with our traffic consultants that would address some of those conflicts in that area. You know, the primary conflict being right behind TEG Credit Union, which is where the slip lane comes in. I know a lot of this is hard to visualize, so I'm trying to talk us through it. Um, right where that slip lane is but it's also the exit for the drive-through so you had some conflicting movements there so what we came up with was we are creating a new landscaped berm that helps to channelize traffic um, as you're coming in and you're going toward the drive-through and so what it does is it just restricts um, one turning movement in the north south through the parking lot and um, we're proposing to plant that and you know provide some landscaping um, in addition to striping and signage, I think we've we've hit it at this point as far as the traffic circulation. But of course, you know, I'm welcome to discuss it. Um, the pocket park will be redesigned. Um, we'll be using that same stone, and so we're we're going to create those sitting walls again. It's very important to Ready Coffee to have areas where people can sit. Um, and drink their coffee and we believe and I think I've talked to each of you probably individually and collectively that this very very small 500 square foot structure we feel so passionately about that is going to create an immense amount of energy at this plaza and we really think that it's going to become a focal point we all know that people love coffee and we're hoping that that pocket park is an integral part of you know the use of this building um, so we have created a drive through lane, we have created a slip lane, an emergency lane for um, the egress out of the building. <clears throat> we did provide you with a lighting plan. So the lights um, that we're proposing to use are the same lights that are used up Route 9 and that are on the plaza. So up Route 9 you see the single head um, goose kind of gooseneck lights. On the plaza, there's double uh, headlights. There's gonna be, I think I counted before, six or seven new lights, the same fixture. There'll be, um, I think there's six goose gooseneck lights on the building that Michael Bird and I spoke earlier and we recognized that the lighting plan, we're not confident that it, it um, collected the lights from those gooseneck lights. They don't emit a lot of light, but we're not convinced that they accurately pick those up. So we're going to revisit that again. But that's the extent of the lighting is same light pole um, and adding, I think, six lights throughout the plaza. I don't see it now, but weren't there two kinds of lights on the building? One had an upper and lower <coughs> shoot light up and shoot light down, like, there's a, there's like a, a cylinder a with a pinch walls. waist. Where, I, where we can't they? find them anywhere. I thought I saw it someplace, but I looked through all the plans again tonight and I don't, didn't see them. We, um, we had submitted uh, some paperwork with the cuts on. That's what happened. It was in the application, but it wasn't on the drawing. It wasn't on the building. Here, I'll show you. It's on the building, and I didn't it's, see it, it on the, it, on the he, lighting. They don't see it on the building. Yeah, That's what they're saying. I have it. I have it. But if they're not on the building, I think is what he was well, saying. Well, for the next submission, we'll have them in. Thank you. And we also had the, uh, the comment about the up and the down. That's the... Yeah. Just where, which... Yeah, where are they on what? That's the, the pro yeah, 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 we'll, we'll put we'll, them on the building. We'll get them on the building. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> um, we did provide a complete landscaping plan um, prepared by Michael Boyce. Um, I will attest to you, as I said before, I don't know landscaping and I don't know plants. I know that he tried to incorporate most of the existing landscaping minus those blue stocky things that no one particularly likes. Um, <laughs> the owners of the property are pretty passionate about boxwoods. I know they were trying to incorporate that. Um, Jed Bonham from Ready Coffee did contribute a lot to the landscaping. Architecture and landscaping are very, very important to him, and so he wanted a certain look. Um, so we did provide a complete landscaping plan. Um, added trees where we could add trees. <clears throat> I can go through that if you'd like me to. Um, no. And of course, last but not least, is the architecture of the building. And so we have worked probably for a year on trying to develop the architecture for this building. Um, 
we had presented plans quite some time ago that um, were, were significantly redesigned. The original plans that I think a smaller group here saw uh, didn't have a drive through. And a flat and, roof. And the colors mm -hmm. really were, and the design were inconsistent with the project and also inconsistent with the code, the new code. So um, Michael Berta went back and worked, again, architecture with uh, Jed is very, very important to him, and worked closely to try to incorporate some of the colors um, that we see on the site. And so they developed this plan using, is it fair to say that they're shades of gray? Yes. <laughs> um, so shades of gray. So it is a white brick um, that has the gray tone in the brick and um, gray, I'll call it hardy, but you call it Nietzsche, a Nietzsche yeah. board. It's, it's um, material and similar to Hardy and um, so we feel that this carries the theme of the field stone and the colors in emergency one over into this building um, Michael has provided uh, elevations we've got dimensioned elevations to address the code issue which we can go through with you tonight Tad if you'd like to and um, all of the colors and materials for the building so we think that we've hit it um, and that is our presentation. We're hoping tonight that we can discuss um, the classification of this action. You know, perhaps we can discuss the seeker review. We already have the, I think I sent you the resolution already, didn't I? Yes. Yep. It's, it's a type two action. Yes. Okay. Seeker's, and, seeker's already done. Okay, good. And that we can also um, perhaps send this to county planning so we can start the GML 239 process. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Let me start with our consultants, Ms. Beltriani. So I think the majority of our, many of our comments are um, mostly technical and consistency through the pages comments, but just for a high level kind of overview, um, I know that some um, variances were needed. It sounds like you maybe can just touch on that um, once I'm done going through them, uh, the updates on from the ZBA. Um, we also noted that the gable height uh, seems to exceed the maximum height, but the does that include the parapet? Just just confirm the height measurement from where it's where it's measured. Well done. Um, we also have a note on the front setback um, that it would be measured from the open space area. So again, just check how that's um, how that's noted throughout the plan set. Um, the 15 foot foot setback is the maximum, um, and I think you're showing 26 feet, but you might actually make it with the open space area. Okay. Um, the the north setback with regard to the driveway um it may not need to be included in the side yard setback um it's noted that a dotted line could be added around the new building and associated improvements as a theoretical lot um, to facilitate the review um, but i would defer to to tad on that for her interpretation um and then, you know, again, m many of the comments on some of these other pages, we would defer to the engineer on circulation. Um, just in terms of site circulation, make sure that there's some adequate visual cues uh, for the circulation patterns, particularly for pedestrian circulation as well. Um, the brick, is that um, intended in terms of the columns? Is that intended to wrap around the columns? Are there any bollards or features that would protect the columns as they're shown on the um, on the renderings, it looks like they kind of just go straight to the ground. Uh, so that would be a consideration. Um, there's an open area and planting bed on sheet seven that doesn't really appear on the site plan sheet, so just check that. Um, we also brought up the gooseneck lighting. Um, so, you know, again, just check that. Um, and a couple of comments on the, on the lighting, and I think there seems to be a consistency question about uh, the lighting plan versus the site plans and so forth. Um, there's a door that's shown on the side of the southern elevation. Um, there's not really any design or color incorporated as part of that, so uh, we would appreciate that being shown. Um, the brick, as a note, could also just be continued under the walk-up window to continue that brick look rather than the horizontal fiber cement board. Uh, a wider sill would also be appropriate. Um, the window to the right of the walk-up window may leave too much surround. Um, the ratio of openings to wall area in the front facade and any facade parallel to the front facade 
uh, should be between the heights of 30 inches and eight feet above the floor finish uh, should be a minimum of 70%. So just check if it's met. Um, you might have to widen or change the window configuration. Um, the maximum horizontal distance of an opaque surface between glazing uh, between the heights of 30 inches and eight feet above the floor finish height shall be two feet i.e. the opaque wall area should only be two feet wide next to the windows so just check that that condition is met um, and then windows should be located no more than 30 inches off the ground um, and it seems the walk-up window is 34 inches so again we're just asking that you check the consistency there um, the the details for the the dumpster enclosure show the split face concrete block it is going to be in a visible location so we just um, wanted to flag that for the planning board to get their their sense of whether that's appropriate um, and I believe you discussed the reconstructed wall in the front of the building um, but if we could get some more detail on the plans regarding that where they're moving to and and how they're being reallocated um, and then street trees a minimum of one street tree for each 30 linear feet of all road or driveway frontage or fraction thereof shall be planted on a planting strip or tree pit located in the public right-of-way or immediately adjoining the right-of-way where a yard exists so the planning board should just determine the appropriate location um, based on the consultation with uh, the applicable local or state highway agency and the obviously the location of underground utilities should be considered in that as well and that's the extent of our comments thank you thank you for that summary adriana <clears throat> mr zatera uh yeah sure so i um i was away last week so i took uh, unfortunately i just had an opportunity yesterday to take a very quick um look at the plans i sent up some email um comments um I'm looking at them now i have like a few more and like i'll finalize those and send out uh, a memo but um kelly had already um, addressed the the one about the sds for building um two um my second comment was uh i don't remember at our offline um meeting that we had we were sitting there and you know we sketched out you know you had sketched out we said okay draw this over here make this like this and do this and but I don't I, I seem I seem to recall and maybe you know, I'm wrong that there was some kind of a delineation for the right turn in from route 9 to guide to guide the ready coffee traffic into uh, the drive-through lane or get it into the drive-through lane but I could be mistaken I, I, so I don't have a copy of the sketch you I had can, it yeah I can send you a copy of the sketch there was a discussion at one point about a pork chop you know some sort of there so that people would go through the slip lane you know straight and then into the drive yeah they would go left into um, TEG was it just you know like striping though maybe there's definitely striping we, we yeah did have the I don't yeah. see any striping but but I think I think we'll save that because I think one of the things that you know the planning board is going to talk about is bringing in uh, like a traffic engineer just to just to just to take like a look at this uh, like also so I think we'll save you know the circulation stuff for that so um, but a couple other things as far as uh, in front of building number two uh, where that got that got um, opened up to make. Um, uh, a two-way two-way access you know the curb the curb in that area has got to get um, cut cut back because it's not a full um, two-way access and there's and there's a proposed crosswalk that just kind of comes right into the middle middle of you know the lanes there and just you know, like ends and so that can't that okay. can't you know be um, and I think we need to look at you know like collectively how how the pedestrians get like around this site uh where the handicapped uh, like parking is going to be because you know obviously the parking lot's been um, reconfigured so there's got to be handicap spaces for building number two there's got to be handicap spaces for ready like coffee and we just need to make sure that everybody's got you know the required number of handicap spaces and where there's going to be um joe had one that was tucked into in front of uh, building number two and was in a very odd like spot like tucked in a corner I think it was going to create more issues but again that's something 
Yeah, I think he had it there because that's where that crosswalk was, but we can, we can. Yeah, but the crosswalk doesn't go to anywhere and it's not part of the handicap spot. But again, that's something that we'll go, that we'll get to. Um, you know, as you were talking before, I was looking at Joe's um, grading plan and I think he and I can sit down because now there's a lot of curbing that's going into a parking lot that's just an open like area. So I think looking at it, that there's going to be places where water is going to be trapped because of the insulation of the curbing. So I think, and there's, and there's you know existing storm drain lines that run down through that area. So I think there's either got to be some um, grading done, some bottom of curb elevations set so that we make we can make sure that water is going to properly drain out of that you know drive through area where it's trapped between you know the curbs and most likely add a couple more um, catch basins to make sure that we don't have an area of standing like water you know because nobody wants that of you know obviously and um, so uh, I guess the last thing was um, you know there's a site plan shown on Joe's plans there's a site plan shown on Mike's plans I think there should only be once one set of drawings that has like a site plan because I there's a I just quickly look there are some minor like differences and I think as things get like changed it's just best to have one site plan okay you know and I don't care it doesn't matter to me you know, like who does it but um, you know if Mike wants to have you know the site plan and Joe deals with the grading and yeah. you know anything else that's you know that's yeah. okay but so anyway so I'll um, you know like finalize this and uh, I'll get this out um, by the end of the week. Thank you, Peter. Ms. Moss, comments? Yeah, we're going to need to work on where that public space is um, so that you potentially don't need variances. Um, I didn't <coughs> see it clearly defined on this presentation, although I did see one that you had presented to me earlier. Okay. I don't know that it's in this, this set. Um, we're going to need to talk about the, uh, the zoning table. Okay. Um, and I'll need to talk to, uh, Bonnie about that, to, cause when the public open space comes in, your setbacks are going to change. So, okay. So you won't I, I'm looking like a deer in front of headlights. I apologize because this zoning is very confusing it is me. very confusing and I in all my years have done so it's many and not that it's a bad zoning code it's just it's very confusing it so is. for me the best would be I know you and Bonnie have been so accommodating but if the three of us could just get on the phone or on a zoom and last time we drew it we're With closer now I think yeah. we could probably just draw on the screen and it's very effective okay. so okay and I think then a lot of this can then we're all starting from the same place yes okay and then it'll have to be shown on one of the sites. Yes, plans. correct. Yeah, I think there should be a page that's blown up that shows the setbacks, so they're very easy to <laughs> see and from what they're being pulled from. Right. Okay. And then I just had a question about the building. It, sure. Is there a restroom inside for an employee to use? Yes, there is. Okay. It's, it's not like the old photo mats. They run next door. I just <laughs> <laughs> just checking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. that was funny. Ms. Potter, any comments? So tonight the board can classify as type two. Uh, the small size of the building <coughs> falls within uh, the type two category list. But based on everything we're hearing, we're not ready to send it over to county planning. Um, I also just want to confirm my understanding that the only way to get to the drive through is by going into the entrance north of Reading Coffee. And if you go in before that, you can't get in it? Yeah, no, that's not true. No, you can get in if you pull in right after um, Emergency One and mm -hmm. Mavis. So you pull into the main intersection and you go All east. the way, all the way east. Yeah, as if to you're going to gonna, as if you're gonna hit the Grand Union. You make a left and then another left and then you can pull in. Okay, but you have to be up in the main aisle. Yes, and you could also enter from Pine Woods. You go to the main aisle as well and then take a right. There's also other ways to enter in from Pine Woods if you took a right to go for the, uh, where Al 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 is first. Yeah. 
There's also a break right um, across from Mavis, so you can get in there yes. as well. So we were trying to alleviate the traffic that it didn't have to come up into, um, it didn't have to come up into the main through road, so there's a way to get in right before it. I, I know it's hard to see on these small drawings. I mean, I have the large drawings, I just think. No, 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 no
brick underneath the window, the service window, um, especially if it's stepped back because then it's, it, then it's kind of like a, uh, but it needs a, uh, maybe a, a service shelf in front. So, and that could be corbelled there too to add a little bit of interest <coughs> and that would create that brick being recessed back a little bit would create like a kick plate, a natural kick plate. So I don't think you'll have that problem. The other thing I did notice with the drawings, I didn't see any soffit, fascia, or gutter. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I, I don't see it on the drawing. So, uh, or on the model. So I just don't know what, you know, what's intended for that. Um, that, was, that was another thing. Um, let's see, the gardens, you answered that, but the walls, warnings, no warnings. Uh, Step gable back. I did uh, the brick. Is it is it brick veneer, brick, brick face, or like the garden? Is it like an ephus material that stool? No, it's a uh, it's a cut brick. It's a cut brick. Okay. Okay. Good. Yep. And uh, the white. I guess uh, could we? S I mean, is there a sample of that that will? We'll get you samples. Yep. Of the materials. Something. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. my only concern was. You know what is it going to look like being so close to Route Nine? Is it going to get dirty and dusty and that element to it? But again, I, I like the feel of it. It doesn't matter. I thought maybe if it was just a French, like a, a off white or something. We'll get uh, materials. But, yeah, we'll get but, you samples. Yeah, that would complement your uh, your uh, Nietzsche product. Um, uh, let's see the columns on the drive up and actually you know do they are they is that brick gonna just be flush all the way up is that that's what's intended so it's a little bit more of a modern it's not gonna have any <coughs> kind of build out or no, anything the brick. right okay um, and then the you know some kind of a protection there uh, bollard or something because you know if somebody hits that that uh, we'll be calling Ray at the fire department. There. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I think, I think it pretty much hit my, all my questions that I had. Um, I'm still not sure about the traffic pattern, uh, but you know, Pete is the expert on that. So I don't, I don't know I, about that. But. I, well, but, but I mean, you know, so that I'm a little deferring. concerned about it, yeah, but, but, yep. okay. but, and I voiced that all along, but, mm -hmm. but, you know, if, if this is to go forward, if some of these embellishments could be made, I think it would add to the character of the structure that's, that you've so kindly presented tonight. So. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. Vice Chair Dexter. I would echo my colleagues in thanking you for um, bringing yet another new project into the core of Hyde Park. I think um, it's always exciting to hear that people are interested in. So it's very exciting. Um, I always like to let my colleagues there to my, my left talk about the architecture because uh, they usually have very good ideas. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so my, uh, you know, my whole uh, concern with this has to do with traffic flow and um, pedestrian movement. And I have taken the opportunity to go down to sit and watch the operations down in Wappingers. I don't. Okay. Are there two? Uh, are there two total in the area? And if there, there are, Wappinger the and Newburgh. Mm, yes, Wappingers and Newburgh. And then the Oh, Newburgh. Under okay, that's why I haven't yeah, seen the other um, one. Lagrange is under construction. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, and Lagrange is getting one. Um, and so it's a it's a very different business model in that somebody pops out the back right. and walks up to the car and verbally takes the order, um, which means you don't have to have a speaker, which means you don't have that uh, metallic voice coming across. Um, but I, I've watched it and it, you know, just like all of the, the coffees, you know, people love their coffee. And so um, if it gets a little busy, if there's four people in the car, um, if, there's, if it's a big order, it, it seems to clog really quickly. Um, and I, I sat there and I watched how it went from, you know, going really nicely and smoothly, the people 
pulling in and a uh, one order per car and then one car came and it was like filled with you know, gram grandma <laughs> and everybody and and they and it took forever and they unlike McDonald's they didn't seem to have a place where they could send them to go wait while they prepped everything because all they're doing in there is making coffee so yeah. um, and then that that caused like a really quick backup um, which didn't seem to recover for I mean I sat there for like an hour and I was just sitting there watching and so my concerns are with the placement of this right up uh, along Route 9 right where when people turn in to go to the bank a lot of times they sit there and they park right in front of the ATM there <laughs> and so I have seen even without this there I drive by there every night and people are in a hurry and so they pull in and there will be a couple of cars so one will park on this side one parks on the other side and nobody can get through and I, you know um, I see that happening the other thing that's interesting I don't know if this is a new occurrence but I'm now seeing people as we're queuing up and we're stopped at Pinewoods people breaking off and going into the Grand Union Plaza at fairly high speeds and then going around because they want to go up uh, Pinewoods and they're making I mean they're beating everybody in line and I'm like how is that gonna work I, I, I'm so anyway I have very sincere concerns about safety traffic pedestrian interactions and and a property that you don't own right next door that also has uh, people just parking their cars right next to the building. So um, I, I don't think it's insurmountable, but um, when I drive around and I see the only coffee place that is that I enjoy looking at is the one up on 9G, the Dunkin' Donuts, without the drive through because <laughs> there, there's never a safety concern there. Um, and people just learn to drive there, get out of their car, go get their stuff, get back mm -hmm. Okay. So, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Vice Chair Oliver. Um, again, I'll echo my colleagues with thanking you for bringing another project to Hyde Park. And I, I do like the architecture. I like the colors. Uh, I think it's a very unique building and unique space. And I'm sure you have your challenges with trying to make this all work. Uh, my only major concern is the traffic pattern. Um, I'm not really sure what can be done, but. I'm sure the consultants will figure it out. The, my only like real thing that I'm seeing here is as people are pulling into the drive-through and then you have the exiting the drive-through, that kind of like point right there, if maybe you can make it close off that exit to the drive-through and make that a one-way or even just close it off and make them go through the TEG. I don't know if it's that possible. One of the things that we looked at, we did try that. We, ha we actually have exhausted a lot, so it might be okay to get a good fresh set of eyes, Pete, right, on whoever the traffic person is. But we've looked I at mean, a lot of different iterations. And it might, it might yeah. be that there's, you know, maybe just signage or mountable curbs or, or yeah. striping or, you we know, whatever. We also talked about right. different materials, you know, that maybe where there's that, that convergence is to stamp it, um, you know, something, something different. But other than that, I, I like the building. I like the idea and hopefully we can make it all work thank you thank you thank you mr garcia well i'm excited I, another business in hyde park is always good um John, can you the mic? I can't hear you. sorry another business in hyde park is always good um the only thing i see I, I i'm always looking at maintenance and maintaining going forward and i'm used to plowing parking lots and that they pile the snow pretty high in that parking lot and with the curbing and yep. all these curves, where are you going to push the snow? So. I think, you know, in the last few years, I've been before this board many, many years, and I'm, I'm starting to say the same thing. Working for so many different developers and so many different clients, we're getting to the point where on almost all of our projects, we're removing snow, particularly when we have significant snowstorms. So. I think kind of gone are the days, your point is well taken, is that this is a site that's going to have to have um, you know, snow removed. Yeah. It's like and a it, standard operation. It, it is anymore, you know, it's almost, and it's almost self-regulating. You know, the tenants are saying there's no place to park and it's obvious and so then snow gets removed um, when we have so significant snow So you just come in and events. remove it? Excuse me? You're just going to come in and remove it? Basically. Yeah, I mean, it's, it just seems to be normal anymore with a lot of the <coughs> customers that... To comment on that, I think the use of plow trucks is like 
phasing out and yeah. it's all machine. It's all machine. So the machines yeah. are moving and piling and bucketing and yeah. So you, you yeah. Unless it's a big open lot like Walmart where they can plow without uh, physical obstructions. I'd park them all here, support. stop and shop, because it's so they, the parking spaces at the end are very used, yeah. really used. Yeah. Like during the winter, they pile it up, but it can be like 22 feet tall now because they have to cram it up and then it takes forever to melt. To melt. That's they should just the remove it from there too, in yeah. my opinion. But. And then you get the ice. But, but your point is well taken, and I think in this particular situation, it's going to mandate snow removal. The only other thing is, um, I'm not a big fan of fabric awnings. I think they tear, they weather, and um, that's, I mean, other than that, I, I like the building. I, I, I agree with your point with the wood underneath the, the brick would be nice, but I think it's going to get filthy. You're also close to nine where there's going to be a lot of dust. Yeah. Yep. That building's going to get dirty. Oh, so you're gonna have to power wash it or something. So, other than that, I think it's great. Thank you. Thank you, John. So, let's see if I had anything additional to add after all that. So, um, I heard several people, a majority of us tonight, and I know Stephanie had the same issue, talk about the internal circulation. Um, we'd like to run this by Hudson Valley Engineering Associates, I think it is, is our Pete? Yes. VEA is our apparently new traffic consultant. Um, and just to edify the rest of the board, at one point there was a pork chop that was rejected because of plowing and people potentially having problems with uh, making the turn to separate the bank customers from the ready coffee customers. And there was landscaping, which looked like it would be run over too. So I don't see any striping on the plans, but um, the one good thing is my biggest concern, which was cars traveling south uh, if they were closer to uh, the backsides of uh, the CPA, the nail salon, El Guacamole, the Chinese restaurant, all that, that's stopped now because you have a landscaped yeah. island, so it <coughs> forces people to go a, a different direction, so they can't just come into oncoming traffic. Yes. I'm, I just would feel like um, Ann said, I'd feel more secure if I could just have a traffic engineer look at it and say, yeah, I think it's going to work, because um, there may be, as you just said, we've all looked at this so many times, there might be some fine detail we're missing. Um, the photometric plan, I w and, and blow up, I saw it. That includes your new standalone pole lights around there, because some of them is just barely point three. Yeah, it looked low. We we the whole thing we looks low to me. No agree. offense. We're, we we're, agree. We're, we're questioning the uh, company that did it. Okay, because I'm, yeah. I mean, right where a pole is, it's a light pole with a two. It's, like it's showing like point three, and correct. I'm like, that's not possible. Yeah, and Maybe then it should the be three existing poles are like five point six. Yes, five point yeah. yeah. <laughs> We, yes. um, we actually, we've, uh, I've engaged a new, uh, a new lighting engineer. Okay, thank you. Sorry, because that's one of the reasons why we didn't want to refer to county planning yet. Um, I also have in here detail any variances, but that's going to be really a meeting between you, Tad, and Bonnie. Yeah. Maybe Adriana will be there yes. because she yep. worked in the original zoning. But the, oh, the purpose yes. was to be able to draw that <laughs> dotted line and create a lot. It's just, I can't get my arms wrapped around that. But if, yeah. but by creating that lot, we should be able to create a lot that doesn't need I agree, right. but I can't seem to get it right. How many times have we tried to do this? <laughs> I mean, that was supposed to be the beauty of this for the yes. existing sites, where you could just figure out yes. a lot that would not. So Someone has to help. We have to work on that yes. one. Okay, it's you. like new math. Yeah. Um, I do think that the concrete blocks around the refuse receptacle don't look that nice. I'm not sure what else you could put around it skim coat it with stucco or something to make it look a little less industrial. I mean, you're doing it, we're going to the problem, uh, we're going to the effort of making a beautiful building, so this is right next to it. And, um, I don't know when you were in Watford, just if you look, it's the same one that we have down there. The same style, same one. Yeah. With the what? Yeah. <coughs> it's the same yeah. one. Yeah, Sorry, spare your voice. It's the same one as in Wappinger, and we can get a picture of it. So right. maybe but that's easier. I, I would not want to compare this one to Wappinger's because you have spent so much time making it Different. attractive yeah, yeah. that I would not say that it's the same dumpster. That mm -hmm. immediately makes me. And it's heavily. Cringe. You know, we did do a lot of landscaping in there, but we'll. I think we'll do a better perspective of showing you that. Thank you. Then. Um, Bonnie, uh, Ms. Franson, in her comments said, have you run this, do you show turning radius for trucks, particularly for the refuse trucks? Yes. Um, I saw yeah. it, but this is all, you know, you know what the trucks are that the delivery, or that the pickup will be using. I take it, use it for a, a long wheelbase or? For the garbage truck? Yeah. Is that what you, yeah. Okay. okay. 
And then last, um, and I should have mentioned this when I said about the uh, photometric plan, we, in discussing this with DC planning over the years, for several times they said you should give us an average across the area because when they say recommend two foot candles are lower, they don't mean that every spot has to be lower than two foot candles. What they mean is, is that what the average is, and I couldn't find an average across this part of it. Okay. Um, and of course, right now the average would be really low because you have the existing showing five point yeah. out and the new one showing nothing. So exactly. <laughs> at any rate, um, the other thing I want to emphasize is we are very happy to welcome a new business into town as always. You heard my colleagues talk about how grateful they are whenever we see new development. And it is exciting to have something different there because as I pointed out to other people, the Pocket Park has never realized its potential for whatever reason. But taking, breaking down the elements and incorporating them around this area where we know that there will be, and, and the other thing I should add is if anybody was watching this on television, all the visuals you've done show the stone wall in front being complete. And there's an, there's an entrance there that's an opening. I can show you right yeah. down the building. Yeah. There's an opening there, there because this is encouraging pedestrian activity as yes. well. Which is why I think my colleagues uh, all mentioned having the make, wanting to make sure that we have adequate pedestrian and vehicular circulation uh, up and down. The architecture, I'm, I, I kind of like the idea of the brick around the face. At the same time, I can understand why your client says that it could get dirty. Um, are you telling me that, that the cementitious board will not get dirty as well from people kicking it? It just right. stays, no shoe smudge shows on us? No, because of the color. In, uh, other places. Okay. We have it in the other two buildings right now. It holds up, actually holds up better than the brick. That is great to hear then. So I think that I will kind of relax my interest that in that. However, I'm going to agree with at least two of my colleagues. I prefer also, I think, a, a longer life canopy, like a structural one. Um, I thought Rob's idea of using, incorporating the metal from the roof is a great idea. It would, I think, look better with brackets or something to anchor it along there too. Um, and that's pretty much it. I, I did, Bonnie's gone through this and you'll have to respond to her comments, obviously, but we have had that sort of issue of how do people know that this is the escape lane and this is the real lane? Mm -hmm. Are we going to, I didn't see a sign that says, you know, escape lane, although that's not what we should call it, but we call it bypass. Bypass lane. Do, I don't drink coffee, I don't go through drive throughs People board. understand what that means? Okay. okay. Then I just want to make sure that that's not, it doesn't become two it's lanes, people yeah. thinking they can sit there because the line's gotten too long in case somebody does a big order. Um, and yeah, also, you have to get to a certain point well, in order to get to the bypass anyway. Yeah. Right, but you also have to consider that if they did that, the person who's taking the orders could just walk over and take that order. So if they did decide That's to do that. That's what I was that, saying. It's like. There's, there's, a, there's a person there. It's not like they're missing the sign and the, and the box. But I think the traffic consultant can also help mm -hmm. us with making sure we understand. We that. do a lot with them. We know. Yeah. Are oh, you know HPE? Mm -hmm. We haven't met yeah, yet. Yeah, it's Brendan Fitzgerald. Yeah. You yeah. know Brendan. He's. Yeah, and we he do did, a lot with him. And he did have a phone. You had a phone call with him yesterday, so he said he could take this on. Yeah, he's good. good. Yes. We'll, and we'll get Phil together with him because yeah, we have Phil early. Right. They'll work. They'll, they'll okay. work it out. And so that's it for tonight. I, um, I just have two. Could I just ask yes. two questions? Yes. Just uh, two things that you had mentioned. One was on the comment letter. It said referral over to um, possible referral over to. DOT. And I think some time ago we talked about the fact that there's no DOT permits that are required here and that we... I'm agreed, always happy not to refer to yeah, DOT. Yeah, that we had said there was no reason to refer to DOT. And the second was, just so everyone hears this, the eight, the um, window, I know there's a requirement for a certain um, percentage of glazing. glazing area. And that has to be ADA. So that's why we have that height set because there is a little shelf yeah. there for ADA compliance. Okay. So we may have to just talk to Tad about yeah. how to deal with that. Maybe we bring that up at the Yeah, call. yeah, when we do I that I think call. That, that it's incorporated inside the language in here that if there are practical reasons why we can't, why you can't meet a standard, that we can relax those. Okay. Um, because all standards that are standards that don't have variance can be relaxed, and it would include this this department. So you just have to give us a reason. That's all. Understood. And that okay. makes sense to have an ADA compliant sill there for why you wouldn't have it lower. Lower, correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So if that's it, um, then we'll wait to schedule you when you make some revisions, particularly the lighting plan, so we can get it going to county planning. But in the meantime, we have a resolution tonight that. Let's see if I can remember who's going to be introducing this one to Mr. Curcio. Okay. Resolution classifying the action ready coffee dated August 3rd, 2022, resolution 2021-15. Whereas the applicant NNH High Park LLC has submitted an application for amended site plan to construct a new 512 foot square foot single story drive-through retail facility 
at the property located at 4272-4288 Albany Post Road. Whereas the project is depicted on the site plan entitled Hyde Park Town Center North Amended Site Plan Ready Coffee. Prepared by Berger Engineering and surveying dated June 11, 2022. Whereas, 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 pursuant to 6 NYCRR 617-5C9, the construction or expansion of the non-residential structure facility involving less than 4,000 square feet of gross floor area is a type two action. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the planning board hereby classifies the project as type two action under seeker. Second. Thank you, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Okay, so can you tell your client that we got we did make a solid step forward? Yes. <laughs> yes. What about, uh, Thank you. And then uh, we'll get yes. together with Pete and Hudson Valley yeah. Engineering. Perfect. That yeah, they're gonna. Yeah, they're yeah, gonna. It's on the. It's on the. Yeah. I need they a motion. I need a motion to hire Hudson <laughs> Valley Engineering Associates as traffic consultant to review the. Hyde Park Town Center North Party Copy submitted with an initial escrow amount of $2,000. So moved. Second. Thank you all in favor. Please say aye. 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 The motion carries. And the 2000 came from HVEA. Correct, Pete? Yes. Thank you. So that's it. Um, we'll get a check in for the 2000. And then you okay, get started. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very thanks much. for your presentation. I'm sorry about your throat, Mike. I got to tell you, for someone who has, you can, you can project without the microphone still, <laughs> even with the bad, bad vocal cords. Thank you. The, uh, the Next item on the agenda is a site plan approval for the extension of time to meet conditions. This is for Dollar General located at 1 East Dorsey. This is just the, this is the final 90 day extension request. Um, we believe they're getting really close from what we're told. Um, again, this has been an issue about water quality. Um, as it turns out, the former fueling station that, that now houses Shelley's Deli, the plume went not just downhill, but it went the other way as well. So that's, oh. that's been the problem. Um, Pete may know more about it, but Jason Teed told us from the from, uh, Department of Health that they're really close now. So they should be able to meet this within the next 90 days. Wow. And I anybody have any questions? I believe Mr. Waters is introducing this resolution. Yes, resolution to grant extension of site plan approval, Dollar General, 1 East Dorsey Lane, Resolution 2019-04J, whereas, 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 now, th therefore, be it resolved, the Planning Board hereby grants the applicant a final 90-day extension of time to satisfy the conditions of the site plan approval to the to and including October 17, 2022. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Thank you, John. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries. The next item on the agenda is a site plan waiver approval for roof-mounted photovoltaic panels. This is located at 10 Maple Lane. The zoning administrator has, has made a recommendation that we waive the review for it. This is in the scenic area statewide significance, but it is not visible from, uh, directly visible from either the river or the two historic sites. Anyone have any questions? No. Ms. Weiser, this one's to you. Valencia Jalil, 10 Maple Lane, 6064-02-61-6139 site plan and waiver, August 3rd, 2022, resolution number 2022-30, whereas the site plan Whereas a request for site plan waiver has been made to the Town of Hyde Park Planning Board by Valencia Jalil for the installation of rooftop, of rooftop solar panels on the property associated with a single family home, which requires a building permit, and whereas, 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 therefore be it resolved that the Town of Hyde Park Planning Board hereby waives site plan requirements for the proposed changes as described in the building permit received by the building department June 18, 2022, and per the waiver request to the planning board dated July 19, 2022. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries. The next item on the agenda is another site plan waiver. This is for an in-ground pool to be located at 24 Cove Road. The mailing address is Rhinebeck, New York, but this is the very far north where I think it's Mill Road uh, or Cove Road first, then Mill. Um, but these, this, there's part of Hyde Park and part in Rhinebeck. Okay. And in addition, this is the couple that um, I believe we might have had initial conversations with about doing uh, in, at the 
South Cross and Route 9 intersection, there's a house on the uh, left-hand side and the left uh, yes. northeast. They were considering, uh, they purchased it and they were considering making it into a retail store of farm-to-table products. Maybe it didn't make it this far, sorry. Uh, at any rate, they in COVID hit, they didn't really do anything for a while, and now they actually bought a bigger space. And across have sold this one. And they're selling this one, because yes. you see the signs since yes. you live there. So, <laughs> At any rate, so um, this is, again, a recommendation for a waiver. And I believe this will be introduced by Mr. Oliver. Yep. Resolution number 2022-31, whereas a request for site plan waiver has been made to the Town of Hyde Park Planning Board by Matthew and Aaron Humbug for installation of a 16 by 38 in-ground pool on the property associated with a single family home requiring a building permit and therefore be it resolved that the Town of Hyde Park Planning Board hereby waives site plan requirements for the proposed addition as described in the building permit received by the building department July 2nd, 2022 and per the request of the planning board dated July 19th, 2022. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is another site plan waiver. This is for more roof mounted photovoltaic panels. This is located at 11 K Wood. Um, this is also in the village, which is in the SAS or the scenic area of statewide significance. But this site is not visible from the river or either one of the historic sites. We have the recommendation from the zoning administrator. Anybody have any questions? Mr. Garcia, this goes back to you. Okay. Um, Town of High Park Planning Board, Anthony Cancer, 11 K Wood Place. Site plan waiver, town code section 108-9.4C2, dated August 3rd, resolution 2022-32. <coughs> Whereas a request for site plan waiver has been made for the Town Hyper Planning Board by Anthony Kanzler for installation of rooftop solar panels on the property associated with single family home, which requires a building permit. Whereas, 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 therefore be it resolved that the Town Hyper Planning Board hereby waive site plan requirements for the proposed changes as described in building permit received by the building department July 18th, 2022, and per the waiver request to the planning board dated July 27, 2022. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously as well, and I have to compliment our planning office and our staff because isn't this the order that, didn't this just come in like two days ago? That service with a smile. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> the next item on the agenda is Michael Cohane. This is another site plan waiver for roof mounted photovoltaic panels. This location is 39 Horseshoe Drive. Again, it's in the SAS. Again, it's not visible from the river nor from the two historic sites directly. Anybody have any questions? Thank you. And we got the recommendation as well from Ted. And I believe this is Mr. Waters' resolution. Yes, Michael Cohane. 39 Horseshoe Drive, 6064-12840705, Site Plan Waiver, Resolution 2022-33, whereas a request for the Site Plan Waiver has been made to the Town of Hyde Park Planning Board by Michael Cohane uh, for the installation of the rooftop solar panels on the property associated with a single family home, which requires a building permit, and whereas, 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 Therefore, be it resolved that the Town of Hyde Park Planning Board hereby waives the site plan requirements for the approved changes as described in the building permit received by the Building Department July 22nd, 2022, and per the waiver request to the Planning Board dated August 2nd, 2022. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That motion carries unanimously. The next item on the agenda is another site plan waiver. This is for siding, replacement windows, and doors. A lot of windows being replaced at this site, so I take it it's fallen into sort of major desuetude. Um, at any rate, this is a waiver. The location is 31 Parker Avenue. This is, an, a, again, a SAS, but it's not visible from either one of the historic sites nor the river. And having, I drove by it today, and it's going to look a lot better oh, with yeah. the replacements. Yep. <laughs> a lot better. Anybody have any questions? Mr. Oliver, this is yours. Resolution number 2022-34, whereas a request for site plan waiver has been made to the Town of Hyde Park Planning Board by Monica Alt to replace 26 windows, three doors, and vinyl siding <laughs> on the existing single family home with more energy efficient windows and doors. And whereas, 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 therefore be it resolved that the Town of Hyde Park Planning Board 
hereby waive site plan requirements for the proposed changes as described in the building permit dated July 27, 2022, and the request for a waiver of site plan received by the Planning Department on August 2, 2022. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Next item on the agenda is another site plan waiver of approval. This is for a front stoop roof canopy located at Six Horseshoe Drive. Same thing applies. It's in the SAS, but not visible from either one of the historic sites or the river. Anyone have any questions? No. no. Ms. Weiser. Uh, Town of High Park Planning Board, Robert Greiger, Six Horseshoe Drive, August 3rd, 2022, resolution number 2022-36. Looks like Robert Rieger, probably. Whereas a request for site plan has been made to the Town of Hyde Park Planning Board by Robert Rieger for installation of dormer type of a dormer type roof canopy over the existing front stoop on his existing single family home and whereas, 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 therefore be resolved the Town of Hyde Park Planning Board, board hereby waive site plan requirements for the proposed changes as described in the building permit application dated July 15th, 2022, and the request for a waiver of site plan received by the Planning Department on August 3rd, 2022. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> Thank you. Any further discussion? <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> the next action would be to respond to the Dutchess County Water and Wastewater uh, proposed becoming, or they're proposing to become lead agency for the Greenfields Alternative Water Supply uh, interconnection. I had a hard time sort of following mm -hmm. this because. Yeah. The, the Madison Avenue location is near where um, we just had a subdivision, a resubdivision for an application. In other words, it's very close to St. Andrews. I'm not St. Andrews. Uh, yes. So my question has been sort of, that's a long distance to go. Not St. Andrews, I'm sorry, further south. At any rate, it's a very far distance to go. And but they said that it's only four acres, but we didn't get a map with anything. Mm. Pete, do you know what this project's about? This is for Greenfields? Somehow, some way, it references the site, it references a site, uh, it references a DEC uh, Superfund site that's at the locate where the fire training academy is now in Creek. Somehow they're tying the PFOAS pollution at Creek all the way back up the Falk Hill to Greenfields somehow, I guess. I'm not really sure how this well, is Well, Greenfields, working. yeah, I mean, Green, Green, I don't know about their tying it, but Greenfields, from what we understood, Greenfields did have some hits for the uh, PF, PFOAs and uh, CPL did uh, a study for the Water Authority in terms of different um, you know, like alternatives to connect um, Greenfields to uh, their existing system in Roosevelt Road. I think there was an alternative to go down to Creek Road. I don't know what the outcome was, and I'm not quite sure. It sounds like because I'm not. I think it's Creek Road. I'm not directly connected with Madison Avenue, the, the where the current Hyde Park water supply stops. That maybe where they were just working, DCWWA, right? Yeah, well, Madison Avenue is by uh, is that, you yeah. know, is Mr. Holtz, right? Yeah. 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 Is this Mr. Holt's neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Yeah. His father developed. That's what I thought. So it is close to St. Andrews, and I'm right. That's a long way to go up, but maybe they're just looking at the four acres around Creek Road. I, I'm not, I'm a little confused. But at any rate, um, did anyone have any questions on the, be, because my biggest concern when we read, all read the EAF was it said that there's no population growth from this anticipated. If you're gonna run water infrastructure to areas of town that do not have any water, you're going to, water infrastructure, it had to be serviced by individual wells, you're going to have some growth inducing characteristics. There's probably some pressure to rezone after the water's available. Then that has to be analyzed by Seeker. Yeah. I, I should explain that the grant that they're applying for is due September 7th. It's one of those environmental fund something or others to, to repair broken down systems and it's a once in a time big grant. But I don't know how they, I mean, let me put it this way. Ms. Franson did an excellent job, her firm, on analyzing for seeker impacts the proposed change to the assisted living facilities language. They looked at every property that's going to be, could be affected by this, any property that's about more than, I think, four acres, and it would be in the districts, and there were many of them. It took their firm a while. I don't know that DCWA acts as lead agency often for projects that could have this kind of potential impact. So I keep looking at Pete as though you're going to provide an answer and you can't. No, <laughs> no, I can't because I don't, I don't, I don't like know, you know, and, and, and I don't know that 
our firm is doing any further work. Like I said, we did some initial like studies to say, hey, here's you know here's here's the cost if you go here, here's the cost if you go over there, and where that like went after that, I'm not too sure. But I know there was some talk because <coughs> we were working on CPL and myself were working on a project at the fire training center and we got the DEC and working with the county and we because the 911 center could use a good potable <laughs> water supply mm -hmm. and we were talking about running a, a line from Joseph's down Creek Road to get to the fire training center and then the county uh, would look to spur off of that and go to Greenfields now I don't know where that went if it went any further and so as um, I note in the letter I'm sorry I can't be too helpful no no as I, I noted in the letter it says that they had attached the plan the plan set but there was no attachment to it Cynthia gave me what we had which is this the EAF so, so this is just for your consent to be for, for your agents. consenting to them to be lead agency in their project I mean as I a good know. education for the board remember if we object then it goes to the commissioner of the Department of Environmental Conservation who makes some kind of adjudication. Is there a, uh, is there like a timeline thing? They have to complete secret, I believe, by September 7th in order to make the grant application. That's a very short amount of time. I emailed Director Churins, who's a great guy and lives here. He's a Hyde Park resident, but I didn't get a response back asking questions and could we see the, the, you know, the plans. So, but I didn't hear anything back. This is before I read the letter. Yeah. Uh, so what if we didn't do this till our next, when's our next meeting? Two weeks, August 17th. But I'm just, so, so, cause you don't want to go send it back and then, and then you know, done. consent to it if, if we have a question. So do you have to vote on it tonight? But then we, we would, have 30 days. Would we'd be able to reach out to them and ask some questions and maybe you can get a better response than I did. Yeah. I would go to, uh, you know the new director Michael Keating so Would that give us you, enough time 30 days the letter is dated July 22nd okay. and they asked yeah. for the return of the form prior to August 22nd 2022 so our next meeting is uh, August 17th we would still have time so should we do you want to wait and hold off on this yeah I can probably I mean, compose this, a better letter I mean, this, if I can yeah. see what the plan looks like. <laughs> I mean, this could have major impacts to the town of Hyde Park. So can you give me, you give me copies There's of the paperwork and I'll reach out to them tomorrow? Out. Correct. Or we're asking someone yeah. who may not know how huh? to conduct secret. Well, that's what I'm say. Yeah. Good. Yeah, if you could just resend it and then I'll, I'll give, uh, I'll get a hold of Michael Keating. Okay, so then we will move this to the next agenda. Pending, pending some investigation huh? by Mr. Sotero. Well, like eventually when they do like a project. No, I'm just talking to people. I mean, when they do a project, they would need a SWIP, yeah. But I mean, just for now, they're just applying. They're just applying. They wouldn't. They wouldn't do the project unless they got the grant money from right. the state, right. which it's a, it's a competitive grant. There's no guarantee that they get it. But again, I believe they have to have secret done before they, or as part of their grant application, which doesn't leave them a lot of time if we send it back on the 22nd. But that's within three three days they gave us, so I'm not going to worry about it. And maybe there'll be less secret need to be done once we discover more of the project. Right. So okay. We'll move to the next agenda. And that means that it's time for us to adjourn, so make it a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor. <laughs> Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thanks to the town board for providing the resources for this meeting to ultimately be televised. Um, we did have a, we had a technical snafu. Uh, actually, not a technical snafu. The individual who normally records and broadcasts this was not able to come, had in the last minute emergency and his boss couldn't make it here in time. So we'll hope for better next time. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.